Well, hey folks, by popular request, we're going to enter a world of fine porcelain by William Goebel, right here on my take on Home and Garden. So today we're going to look at Hummels as a collectible. We'll give a little background and we'll start with this wonderful cabinet. When I was 10 years old, I went with my grandfather to get an antique cabinet for his golf trophies. Grandma was sick of them being all over the house. So I was 10. And that was in 67. So, I mean, the thing was an antique back then. You can imagine with the curved glass, I would just hate to replace it today. Now I inherited about 20 Hummels from my mother. But today we have probably 130. Too much for one video, but we're going to start off with some of the boys. Okay, folks, so a woman called Berta Hummel. Now, she grew up in a household of music and art and uh, became quite an artist of drawings. She came up originally with the little children's faces and characters that they went on to use. Now they is Franz and his son, William Goebel. They had a porcelain fabric in Northern Bavaria. William Goebel acquired the papers and drawings and characters to make these into fine porcelain pieces. Well, it became so popular with the GIs after the war, World War II, they were sending them home and bringing them home as gifts for their family. So it just took off all over the world. And this is one of the favorites this character. He's an eight inch tall schoolboy, and we're gonna get into each character and tell you all about him. Tell you some of the names and so on. So here's eight inch tall schoolboy with five inch tall and four inch tall. Today, collectibles like this move up and down like any commodity. Glass and porcelain seems to be slow and lag, but they do go back up. In fact, I've watched these starting to go back up. Still plenty of finds and buys out there. Don't give up on your favorite homo porcelain. Okay, first we have on the left the soldier boy, the tall soldier boy. I'm gonna put these in groups for you. Here's in the middle. The Volunteers. Then on the right, we have Drummer Boy. 
So now we've got a group of musicians, and we do have a couple of gr the girls. This is the flute player, the squeeze box, trumpeter, and another flute player. Okay, now, did anybody have a problem with any of those figures that were in that group? Probably not. Unless you're a super Hawkeye dealer, then you may be. The dealers will be chomping at the bit to tell how a couple of those weren't genuine. Well, you know, we're going to talk about that, too. It's no good if you can't help somebody with what you're showing. These three characters are examples of Japanese mock-ups from the 50s. But let me, let me tell you something. Is a collection, they're really well done. The only difference is knowing the difference. So if you think you're paying for a Hummel from Germany, that's what you need to get. But these are really cute and well done. This is a collection as well. Now some are Nippon and some are Anesco. And they're clearly labeled with a foil label. So they're not to be deceiving. They just wanted a piece of the action. We have another example of that for you that'll help you when you're in the field buying. Now here's two characters reading the newspaper. One is a Japanese mock-up and one is a Hummel. So, which one's the Hummel? Now the neat part is that they're both well done. Nobody would mind either one of these in their collection. Just as long as you know which collection they go in. The difference between the two. The boy reading the paper on the left is the Japanese Maka. No gobel. No bee. No V, no stamp on him. This guy is the Gobel. If you're used to seeing him, you can tell a mile away. If you're not used to seeing him, you have to go to the bottom. This is an era where the B, the notable B, I mean Bumblebee, is stamped or marked on the bottom. Clearly a proper Hummel. An early one too, by the way. A Gobel. Here's another example for you. One is a Japanese made piece and one is a gobel piece. Before I tell you, what do you what do you see? What do you think? The one on the left is really well done. But so is the one on the right. 
a lot of times, because they're so good, you have to check the bottom. The bottom of the piece is going to tell you. The one on the left clearly has a foil stamp and it's by Napco. No deceit here. They're telling you who made it. The boy on the right is a gobel piece. He is stamped in blue with a proper stamp at the time. Also, you can buy books and of course you can Google different things, aspects of these collectibles and get an awful lot of information. I mean, if you're crazy nuts about them or you're a dealer, you know all these stamps and V's and B's just by looking and you know the era that they were made. And it really doesn't take that long. I know some of them, but I just, you know, I don't deal with them every day. So, it's fun. And highly collectible. When economies are good, collectibles prices go up. So it is an investment. When I get teased about the volume of things I have, I remind people. Everything I bought from a kid that I still have, the money is still here in my home. So, think about it. Next time you think you got to go to dinner instead, you know where that eventually ends up. That investment, <laughs> I really just can't go there. Just a thought. Now this boy's the town crier. He's called, hear ye, hear ye. Super cute. He's about six inches tall. And you'll find him from 50 to 70 dollars right now. And up and up higher or lower, depending on how crazy the dealer wants to be. Some of them are in their own category, so I'm doing them singly. This is one of my favorites. He's too cute. This is called good hunting. You know, he's so good, he can't see the, the, the rabbit because he's right at his feet. <laughs> okay, here we go again now. Which one of the hikers is the global piece? You'll think I'm messing with you now. Both of these hikers are a proper global piece. Just to show you, there's more than one of a boy on a fence or a boy in a tree or a boy hiking with a stick. Okay, and the hiker on the left, he's older. That's all. Clearly marked on the bottom. Just like the hiker boy on the right. So here again we have three examples of somewhat of the same subject. The first one's the Merry Wanderer. The second one is Strolling Along. And the third one is home from the market. <laughs> Where you're gonna go.
Next we have the little scholar. So he's coming home from school with his blueprint and drawings. Now this one's pretty special. He was made the same year I was born. Hate to disclose it, but he's just super cute. And that in particular is why I wanted him, why I had to have him. That he could survive that long like I have in a way, and still look that damn good. <laughs> he was made in 1957. So here's one more group, and they're all children singing. smaller scale, three and a half, three inch, four inch, four and a half inches tall. So I have to say it, super, super. Where are you going to go? Not out to dinner to get these. <laughs> we got one more group. And by the way, we hid the Christmas one, so we're not going to spoil that. We'll see the Christmas ones at Christmas time. This big eight inch schoolboy, you can get him between eighty and one hundred and fifty dollars. And some people want more. Some want two, two and a quarter for him. This five inch schoolboy, you can find him for around 50 and then little little boy four inch school boy you can find him pretty reasonable one mistake that has happened over the years is that they just flooded the market but these were so popular and they were getting big money Real good money when they first come out. But the market is saturated. And then as generations go by, a lot of young people don't care about the things that we cared about. It's all about the art for me. So folks, if you liked our video, share and like and comment and give us a thumbs up. We care about all our subscribers. You can follow us on Instagram at my take on home and garden. Remember folks, just don't go out to eat all the time. You could own them. You could have them on your shelf. Now take care everybody. Be safe. And we'll see you in the next video.